Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a monster film, Grabbers. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins when a ship is seen sailing through the ocean in the middle of the night. Suddenly, the sailor sees a strange green light falling down from the vast sky. After a while, the green light submerges in the water strongly. The worker could not comprehend what he had witnessed. As a reaction, the group of sailors reports it to the authorities. Upon checking the water, one of the sailors goes down and sees traces of blood in their ship. While he's perplexed about what he saw, an unknown tentacle creature from the ocean attacks and pierces his whole chest. The other sailors go out with a weapon to try to save their colleague. However, as soon as one of the young sailors steps out of the ship, the unknown tentacle creature attacks from above, leaving him screaming in agony as he's being mauled to death. After the gory tragedy, the scene quickly transitions to a house where an alcoholic guard man, nicknamed Mr. Vodka, is seen holding a liquor bottle as he's having the worst hangover of his life. Meanwhile, his work partner is the opposite of him. Lisa is a workaholic and consistently tries to impress her superiors by working very hard. Currently, Lisa is on a ship to perform her duty in taking care of a remote Irish island. As the scenes play with the partner's point of view, both of them meet in a car to commit to their guard duties. In the next scene, an old man is seen strolling with his dog in a vast landscape. Approaching the beach, the old man sees dead sea creatures lying on the shore. Two townsmen see a strange creature on one of the sea traps. As one of them stares at the creature, the creature splashes water on his face, making him startled and mad. At the same time, the man complains about the strong odor of the creature. The work partners, Lisa and Mr. Vodka, are having a road trip to go to their destination. They are slowly building a rapport, in contrast to their weird first encounter. After a while, they go to the beach to investigate the dead sea creatures. The marine ecologist says that the creatures are called pilot whales. He also says that the sudden deaths of these pilot whales are a strange phenomenon, and it's the first time of him seeing such a tragedy. After leaving the beach, the work partners settle down in the nearby town. As soon as Lisa steps out of the car, she is cackled by a creepy man. As a reaction, she asks the man's name. However, because of the creepy man's complicated name, Lisa decides to just proceed with her day. In the next scene, one of the drunk townsmen nicknamed Mr. Whiskey brings the strange creature into his house to further investigate it. Meanwhile, the work partners go to the construction site to seek help in moving the dead pilot whales. The workers agree, and they go to the beach to help. After a while, one of the townsmen sees a strange egg dumped on the shore. As he investigates it, an unknown creature suddenly appears with its GPS tentacles and starts pulling him to the ocean. By nighttime, the town realizes that one of their people is already missing. In the bar, Mr. Vodka is drinking alcohol with his fellow drunk townsman, Mr. Whiskey. Mr. Whiskey tells a secret and says that he caught a sea monster. However, Mr. Vodka does not believe a single word he says. In the next scene, the local married couple hears a loud knock on the door. As the husband checks it, they see their friend barely standing up. After a while, their friend falls down to the ground. The husband rushes to help his friend. However, as soon as he steps out of the house, an unknown tentacle creature from above attacks and pierces his whole body. To hide, the wife comes inside the house and locks all the doors. While panicking, she hears the screams of her dying husband. For her safety, she plans to go to the chimney to hide. Unfortunately, her plan does not age well, and she's quickly attacked by the unknown creature, consuming her body. On the other side, a drunk Mr. Vodka comes to his work partner's apartment to invite her to drown themselves with alcohol and hormones possibly after that. Not even thinking about it, Lisa quickly rejects the idea. Meanwhile, Mr. Whiskey checks on the strange creature he caught. Strangely, he does not see the creature present in the sea trap. At the same time, he checks his mirror and notices that slimy liquid is everywhere. Suddenly, he hears a noise in the background. While he looks back, he sees the unknown creature on his home ceiling. Mr. Whiskey screams at the top of his lungs as he sees the creature threatened to attack him. Not long after, the monster jumps on him and starts mauling him. Fortunately, Mr. Whiskey survives by fighting and defeats the monster by kicking its ball head and knocking it out. In the morning, Lisa greets her drunk work partner and wakes him up. At work, they are greeted by Mr. Whiskey and he talks about the unknown creature that attacked him last night. To further investigate, the partner goes to the laboratory to check the remains of the creature. The marine ecologist says that it's a completely foreign species, and he could not even classify it. Mr. Whiskey insists that they should call the creature Grabber, as he's the one who discovered the human-eating creature. The marine ecologist theorizes that based on the creature's body structure, its source of life is by consuming the blood of its prey. Still, the scientist concludes that it's something alien, and definitely not from Earth. Moreover, he says that the creature is female and is actually pregnant. 
The marine ecologist shows them the creature's egg, including its inside. After learning about the creature, Mr. Vodka now theorizes that the creature has something to do with the deaths of pilot whales on the beach. Not long after, they go to the beach, as they see the townsman's car strangely dumped on the shore. They check the area, and see no alcoholic traces of the townsman. To further investigate, they climb the roof of the nearby house. On the roof, Lisa sees a long piece of clothing that stinks like the creature. She realizes that it's stuck on something. Lisa pulls the cloth, and she's shocked as the head of the local man comes out of the chimney. The head then starts falling down, and hits Mr. Vodka in his alcoholic face. The both of them scream in agony as they see the bloody head lying on the ground. After calming down, they proceed to do their job and bring the head to the authorities for them to investigate. The local doctor says that the man could be mauled to death by some strange animal. Quickly Mr. Whiskey comes to the scene to join their team. The team maps the area where strange incidents have happened to investigate the sudden deaths. They theorize that the creature killed by Mr. Whiskey is not alone and is actually responsible for the sudden deaths in their town, including the pilot whales. They theorize that the male counterpart of the creature still lingers in their town. Lisa asks that if the creature needs water to survive, how can it move on dry land? Mr. Whiskey replies that the creature attacked him while it was raining. Lisa is threatened when she realizes a storm is coming later that night. The team then goes to the beach, looking for the alien tentacle creature. Mr. Vodka and Lisa take their flashlight as they walk inside a cave. Meanwhile, Mr. Whiskey's role is to be a lookout. Inside the cave, the partner is perplexed when they see the clothes of the missing fisherman. At the same time, Mr. Whiskey sees the eggs of the grabber buried in the sand. Mr. Whiskey takes hold of one egg and feels something moving inside. In the cave, Mr. Vodka screams to look for the missing fisherman. However, instead of the presence of humans, the partner is greeted by a gigantic male grabber. The two start running for their lives. Fortunately, they find their way to the beach. Quickly, the gigantic grabber aims for the head of Mr. Vodka. Barely missing its attack, Mr. Vodka almost dies on the spot. The team, including Mr. Whiskey, escapes and goes to the town for their safety. The team goes to the laboratory to burn the remains of the female grabber. As soon as they ignite the body, the fire building alarm is triggered, and water from the ceiling starts pouring. The partner turns off the building's water source to stop its pouring. The team is perplexed when they see the body is still solid even after burning it. Slowly approaching the body, each of them takes a weapon for their safety. Suddenly, the female grabber wakes up and splashes stinky water in the face of Mr. Vodka. Moreover, the female grabber rushes onto Mr. Vodka to attack him even more. The female grabber is now stuck on Mr. Vodka's face, possibly looking for a facial massage. Trying to get it off his alcoholic face, Mr. Vodka tumbles down left and right in the laboratory. He takes a shovel and uses it as a weapon to hit the female grabber from behind. Fortunately, with the help of Lisa and the marine ecologist, the female grabber is removed from Mr. Vodka's face. As the female grabber vomits blood, they realize that their theory is true, and the creature is actually a blood-sucking individual. Not long after, the female grabber slowly weakens, as it throws out a lot of sucked blood, possibly because it's contaminated with diabetes and alcohol. The team kicks and attacks it, using ordinary house tools to finish it. Mr. Whiskey comes to the scene, and they wonder how Mr. Vodka survived the raging female grabber. They realize that both Mr. Vodka and Mr. Whiskey were drunk when the female grabber attacked them. This reveals that blood alcohol level is toxic for the grabbers. This is the reason why the female grabbers weakened after sucking the alcoholic blood out of Mr. Whiskey and Mr. Vodka. The team is worried about the upcoming storm at night. Their plan to survive is to stay out of the rain and to drink alcohol as much as possible. Mr. Vodka volunteers to be sober, so they will have a good lookout. Disagreeing with the idea, Lisa talks to Mr. Vodka and says that she should be the perfect person for the job. However, Mr. Vodka insists on the job. Lisa worries because she has never been drunk in her entire life. Before the night, the partner shares a romantic moment at the seaside. In the next scene, Lisa starts drinking alcohol. Not long after, she's already drunk and starts talking about her life traumas. To test if their theory is true, the ecologist takes a blood sample from the alcohol-intoxicated Lisa. The marine biologist quickly makes the female grabber suck the blood sample. After taking the blood sample, the female grabber shivers and dies slowly. In the next scene, the guard partner goes to the church to announce something. They invite all the townsmen to join the party later that night. This reveals that their plan to keep the townspeople safe is by getting them drunk without telling them the real reason why. Drunk Lisa said she would arrest every individual who would not join the party. Although the townspeople are not convinced, their mood suddenly shifts when they hear Mr. Vodka saying that everything at the party is free, including the alcohol. It is now night and the rain is starting to pour down. 
Meanwhile, the townspeople are having fun in the bar, making themselves drunk. The team meets and centralizes all of their weapons, in case they need them. In the next scene, drunk Lisa confides that she also has feelings for Mr. Vodka's alcoholic hormones, but they conclude that it's not the right time for them to tongue massage each other. Meanwhile, the local doctor sees some baby grabbers outside the bar. The baby grabber jumps into his face to suck his medical blood. Lisa and Mr. Vodka try their best to keep the baby grabber off of the doctor's face. Suddenly, the gigantic male grabber appears and easily locates and grabs the doctor with its GPS tentacles. After taking hold of the doctor, the male grabber bites his whole body, only leaving his bloody head off. The partner goes to the car for them to escape. However, the male grabber starts attacking their car. While drunk, Lisa tries to arrest the male grabber for the murder of the doctor. Quickly, the partner goes out of the car, barely surviving the attacks of the gigantic male grabber. The bar owner meets them outside and leads them to a safe place. In an attempt to defend themselves, they ready their flamethrower in case the male grabber comes to their area. The bar owner goes outside with the flamethrower to fight the male grabber. However, the flame quickly dies out because of the rain, making the weapon useless. While drunk, the bar owner blames Mr. Whiskey for bringing the grabbers to their once peaceful town. Moreover, drunk Lisa comes into the scene and almost accidentally spills the situation. Meanwhile, the marine ecologist comes outside the bar to take a photograph of the male grabber. He points his camera at the gigantic grabber and claims that the grabber is just an animal and does not want to hurt people. Soon after, the grabber uses its GPS tentacles to locate and send the annoying scientist flying. Seeing those high-tech tentacles, all the townspeople panic and rush their shitty lads upstairs. Mr. Vodka then explains to the people that they should be safe as long as they are alcohol intoxicated like him. In a safe room, the team discusses how they will deal with the grabber. Mr. Vodka says that if water is one of its sources of livelihood, then they should dry it out. Lisa says they should borrow the construction worker's lifter truck to lift the grabber and dry it out under the sun the next morning. While the team debates on who will get the keys to the trucks and who will drive, Lisa volunteers to take the job. Going outside, Lisa sees a group of baby grabbers in the bar. One of the baby grabbers clings to her foot and she kicks it to send it flying like a frisbee. Suddenly, the male grabber goes for Lisa. The male grabber pulls Lisa's leg and pulls her. Luckily, Lisa is able to get a weapon and uses it to cut and injure the grabber's tentacles. While escaping, Lisa accidentally throws her lighter on the ground, setting the bar on fire. The male grabber then goes upstairs, scaring the shit out of the townspeople. Meanwhile, Mr. Vodka jumps down the building to join Lisa. The both of them now drive to the construction site in hopes of getting the lifter trucks. After getting outside the car, they realize that the rain has stopped pouring. The male grabber goes to the construction site to chase the partner guards. Mr. Vodka taunts the monster. As a reaction, the male grabber takes its smelly tongue out, not to give Mr. Vodka a tongue massage, but to stab him. At the same time, Lisa is able to take hold of the lifter truck and uses it to run over the gigantic male grabber. The male grabber is knocked unconscious, and the partner screams in celebration. But suddenly, the grabber wakes up and pulls Mr. Vodka to kill him. Fortunately, Mr. Vodka dumps a bottle of alcohol in its mouth, making it sick and causing it to release him. Lisa takes the flare gun out of Mr. Vodka's pocket and uses it to shoot at the nearby explosives. After shooting, a loud, gigantic explosion triggers and the male grabber finally dies of it. As the storm completely clears up, Mr. Vodka and Lisa walk their way back to the town. Lisa gives him a flask, but Mr. Vodka throws it away, implying that he doesn't want to be an alcoholic or a workaholic, but prefers to be a hormone-holic in front of Lisa. After a while, they both share a smelly kiss in the middle of nowhere, just in time to defeat a giant tentacle monster. With people thinking that they survived an alien attack, they do not know that grabber eggs are still buried on the beach and are about to hatch, waiting to give horror to a peaceful town once again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.